All right, guys. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well <clears throat> on this morning. Y'all, last night was one of those nights that I, ooh, I slept hard. I slept hard. I slept hard. Uh, say like when I get uh, things knocked out of the way and things taken care of, it allows me to rest well. So I am up and uh, ready for another, another wonderful morning in, morning in prayer. And I hope you guys are too. I hope you all enjoy it our prayer time on yesterday. I know yesterday's topic may have been uh, just a little bit challenging, uh, but at the same time, it was definitely helpful for us to uh, see where we are. Um, guys, just remember that uh, you guys are uh, somewhat in a, in a training zone of getting comfortable hearing yourselves pray, you know, and sometimes when you begin to pray, you'll start hearing that there may be some things going on, you know, um, in your life, in the background or whatever. And uh, when you get into the presence of God, you can't help but to talk about those things. Uh, but just know that as you are talking about it, God is working through it. And, and what we want to do is make sure that we incorporate the word in our downtime so that when it is time for you to pray, that you can bring the word forward. Whatever it is that you begin to sup on, uh, what is, he said, whatever man thinketh, so shall he be. And whatever foods that we put, put in our bodies, uh, that's what's going to be regurgitated, you know, and you don't want to wait until the hour that you have situations going on uh, that you, um, you know, uh, have to be searching for the word because remember, there are going to be times where you're not going to have the word around you and that's why you have to get that word down in your heart, meditating up on the word, uh, getting these skip scripture memorizations. Uh, I think I mentioned on last week, you know, get you maybe a tablet, a journal or something and, you know, put the prayer focus that we have on there and then put those scriptures up underneath it and then do your takeaways at the bottom of it. You'll be amazed at how, you know, if you just create, they got so many fancy things on our phone now, if you just create a space just for uh, dream builders and, and women who win in prayer, you'll be amazed at how you'll find a pattern of something that God was working on in your life. And, uh, and, and God can snatch you up out of those troubled times and get you into a place where uh, you're walking into servanthood because that's really all God is doing. He's just getting us into a place where we begin to start serving, um, that we begin to start serving and then serving on a um, on a different level. Uh, well, we're back this morning uh, getting ready to um, go into prayer once again uh, with our prayer focus being hearing. And, uh, and this morning, um, God gave me the words that, Lord, help me, help me with my hearing so that I'll know when to move. I'll say that again. God, help me with my hearing so that I'll know when to make a move. Okay. And that move could be anything, you know, you may, you know how it is sometimes, um, Sometimes it could be procrastination. Sometimes it could be fear. Sometimes it's hesitation because you've seen, you know, maybe you, you've you done a good thing, but you did it in the wrong timing. So now it's all about time and Lord, help me to recognize when you are here, help me to hear and recognize when you're speaking to me, when it's time to make a move. And that move could be anything. You know, you most, most of the time what well, the Lord reminded me of this morning that uh, we are sometimes drowning in things that we should be surviving in, you know, especially when it comes down to finances. You're talking about something that'll lock your tongue up and I'll, and I'll cut your voice off. Find yourself in some difficult times with your finances. The, b being in strange times with your finances will cause you to do some stuff that you didn't think that you would do. I don't care how saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't know that the God, that God is the God over your finances, the enemy will come in and tell you anything that he's going to take this from you. He's going to do this and that. And God may have just given you one word, make a move. I just need you to do this or I need you to do that, you know, but you got to get your ear close to God to begin to start hearing those things. 
And sometimes God will do it in the middle of the night. He'll give you some instructions on something to do. And if you're anything like me, it's like my eyes just come wide open. And I'm like, but God, I, I tried that, that. He said, but I want you to try it this way. Help me to know God when to make a move. With your children, you know, it may be something that you have been, you know, challenged with. Maybe it's their, their schooling uh, you know, with their education, or maybe just, you know, make that phone call to check up on them or whatever. And, you know, in your heart, you may be saying, well, I don't want to be bugging. You know, God already told me he was going to work it out. But you remember that woman with that unjust, when she went before the unjust judge and the unjust, they kept, you know, they kept, you know, trying to run her away. You know, I, I remember back in the day when I was going to, uh, going to school and, you know, you were dealing with that financial aid. And, uh, you know, every now and then financial aid would come through when you felt like you needed it. And it would be like, I mean, keeping you up at nighttime because you got things that you need to pay. You know, you got expenses, you know, and Lord forbid if you got some, you know, not only school expenses where the money is supposed to be taken care of, but you got other expenses that need to be taken care of. And then the money has not come in. Listen, ladies, this 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 room is called women who pray and win for a re women who win for a reason. We win in prayer. OK, let me kind of back up my anxieties, my fear, my raising my voice is not changing that situation. God, give me a word to tell me when to move and what to do. And sometimes it's oh, you need to go in there and some of your paperwork wasn't signed. Little stuff like that, because the schools, they don't contact you and let you know that stuff anymore. They give you a uh, email address and they tell you to make sure you stay on top of your emails. You're frustrated because you thought that the stuff was just supposed to come, but you didn't know that there was another step that had to be made. You got to go in there. All right, God, give me revelation. And then God gives you revelation on what needs to be done. And then all of a sudden it's a safe passage through. It could be something going on with your marriage. We're talking about, Lord, help me to hear when it's time to make a move. It could be something going on with your marriage. And you're so quick to fly off the handle and it must be this and it must be that or whatever. But then God tells you to stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Okay, you've been up praying, you've been fasting. And you got to remember, either you're going to try God's way or you're going to do it your way. And the Lord may give you something simple like, oh, go check, go check to see if they've been taking their medicine or uh, go check to see, go check to see how mom is doing. You know, especially when it comes down to your husband, because if something is going on within the family, it can cause them to behave a little different within the within the man if y'all are not close to one another or y'all been a strain you know you got different communication uh devices or whatever and then you go over to check to see you know how mom is doing away and you realize oh well you know mom went to the doctor the other day and you know you know got a report or something and now they're trying to handle all of that stuff in their heart god help me to hear when it's time to make a move with something. And it may be something simple that you may do to, you know, ease somebody's heart or whatever. And I'm saying all this because um, I sense a whole lot of anxiety on us a whole lot, which causes us to react. Y'all going to get that in a little bit because I, I, think, I think people are still having a hard time understanding what that means to either react or respond. Don't react quickly to something. Stop and sit in the moment for a minute so that you can hear from God. Because listen, your senses can throw you off. They can, they can tell you anything, especially if something is going on now that looks like something that you've gone through before and you never went to God to get that thing cleared up to see it the way that God saw it and the way that God was trying to present it. You will, you will listen, you'll be back in line God is trying to bless you again, but you can't receive the answer because you didn't go through the last thing properly. So now you're misjudging a situation all because it looks like to me, God help me with my hearing. Because a lot of times, God, I'm not even hearing it well. Y'all, I am one. I have to ask God to do it every day because I move so much in and out of emails, text messages on the job, within the business 
you know, with, you know, just family life, all of that. And they hit me up in different places. And so a lot of times I have to go in and I'll read a message and wisdom tells me, because you got so much going on, let me go back and hear that message again. And the next time I hear it, if my heart is clear, I hear it different than what I did before. Help me with my hearing, God, so that I'll know when to make a move and then also when to stay still, you know. And so a lot of times, guys, you know, you'll you'll see that um, um, God has been trying to answer our prayers a long time ago. It's just our hearing that's not good. We got to get ourselves in good place. You got to wash yourself of old memories, especially ladies. You've had some um, uh, experiences in life, especially if you've had a hard time with women, uh, being around other women. You know, you got you got to wash yourself of that because uh, you can come into a, a clean environment in a relationship. But because you drug, you know, I talk about dragging them bags around, you drug them old memories with you and, and, and then clean that up. You come into a new relationship, you know, because all you wanted was something new. You want a new so you can get out of the old. You got tired of feeling the way you feel. So, Lord, just bring something new. Put Putting something new onto something dirty is just like putting clean clothes onto a, a dirty body, or putting cologne on a dirty body. You got to clean that stuff up. You know, your relationships, God adds to relationships. So if you're having trouble with your girlfriends, different things like that, go in and find out. Lord, what is it that you're really having trouble with? And then if you have had constant trouble in those same areas, go in and find out what the common denominator is. So God, help me with my hearing on this morning. So those that will be praying this morning uh, will be uh, Mrs. Latoya. Uh, let me get back to my uh, screen again. It's going to be Mrs. Latoya, Mrs. Chick Holmes, Mrs. Shanique Hansen. This is Deandra Decker, and then myself. I, I want to say these to those that are leading in prayer. Um, lead in prayer. Okay. Don't don't jump off with anxiety. When you when you come in, make sure you worship God. Make sure you thank God. Make sure you keep God first. And what the spirit will do, the spirit will lead you into prayer. Because a lot of times we think that we know what we need to say already. And I'm probably messing up some of y'all prayers this morning. Because I don't want you coming in and doing what you normally do. Don't, don't jump off the cuff and bring anxiety. Be still. Rest up on God. Thank him for who he is. Let him lead you into the prayer. Because a lot of times that's all we're doing is getting anxiety off of us. And you'll be amazed at how the prayers will come in and break and destroy yokes that are in the room. Amen. Amen. So before we get started, I want to say hello to everyone. And then Mrs. Latoya, you can kick off and I'll close us out. Uh, Mrs. Shanika, I want to say good morning. Thank you uh, once again. Wonderful, wonderful music. Sometimes I, when I hear your music, uh, it kind of reminds me of, of David and Saul. Uh, it said that Saul had like a disturbing spirit that was going on. But every time that David would play the music, it calmed it down. And I used to say, uh, you know, I, I come from a very musically inclined family. That's why y'all hear me playing music a whole lot, because it calms the, the savage beast that's within me. It puts peace to my soul. And I know that there is definitely a connection between us, Nene, because God gives you the right songs to play at the right time. So I want to say thank you for being so attentive uh, to what God has placed in your ear when it relates to music. Uh, Mrs. Felicia Jones, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Delcina Mangrum, I want to say good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Cookie Williams, good morning. Uh, Mrs. DeAndre Deckard, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Timika Franklin and Mrs. Katambra Jeffries, Mrs. Shanique Hanson, uh, good morning to you guys. Mrs. Latoya Hanson, Mrs. Anita Johnson, Mrs. Shannon McCray, Mrs. Regina, good morning, good morning. Mrs. Kathy Mitchell, Mrs. Tanisha Bright, Mrs. Shirley Clark, Mrs. Chick Holmes, good morning, good morning. Mrs. Robin Boone, this, Mrs. Demetrius Amy, Mrs. Karina Smith, Mrs. Nikki Prince, Prince uh, Princess, Mrs. Uh, Ruth Jennings, 
and Mrs. Nene he want to say good morning to you. And I want to come against that spirit that may be saying she can't tell nobody how to pray. I come against that right now in the name of Jesus. I'm coming in to give instructions on prayer. I don't tell you what to pray. I'm trying to get you into a posture called prayer. That's all. Well, how is somebody going to tell you how to pray for something? I'm trying to get you in a posture. So silence that enemy. Remember, I told you to come against that critic that's in your spirit. That's just fear just jumping up. Follow the instructions. Come out with thanksgiving and worship before God. And the Lord will lead you into prayer. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to come against whatever renegade spirit may be trying to lurk around. We got to bring order into the room. See, I'm trying to get us prepared before we go on Facebook. Because we will be going back out there in November. And I need to get us prepared. I don't want you just all over the place. I want you to make sure you remember who you're talking to. Make sure you're talking to God. Amen. Miss Latoya, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Lord, I just want to thank you, my God, for just waking me up this morning, my God, and covering me last night, Father. Lord, I just thank you for the your presence in this room this morning, my God. Thank you for um, each one of the ladies, my God. Thank you for bringing us all together, my God, for one sound, my God. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to lay everything we have with feelings on the altar to you, Father. Thank you for your patience with us, my God. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for loving us even when we fall short of your glory. Thank you for your teaching, my God, bringing us in these rooms and on various other rooms to hear your voice, hear your teaching, be listen to the anointed people that you have appointed to be uh, your leaders to seek to see your to speak your word, Father. Lord, I just want to thank you for just my family, my God, covering them, my God, leading them, guiding them, my God, protecting them from hurt, harm, or danger, my God, covering all of us, my God, from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet, Father. Thank you for your favor over us, my God, keeping your hand on us, my God, keeping us in alignment with you, Father, keeping us in our right mind, my God, protecting us, putting us in the bubble from the enemy, my God, even when he tried to attack us, my God, you give us weapons to fight, my God, and that's through your word, Father, through our faith, Father, us seeking you in the morning, Father, seeking you during the day, Father, seeking you at night, my God, thank you for just who you are, my God. Your your love for us is, is unimaginable, my God. Thank you for having us as your daughters, my God. Thank you for just keeping us, Father. Thank you for just watching over me, Lord. Thank you for just sending me in these rooms to hear your voice, my God. Thank you for sending me in these rooms to, to, to learn your way, my God. Thank you for stripping me, my God. Thank you for removing the old ways, my God. Thank you for adding on the new ways, my God. Thank you for leading me on the right path, my God. Thank you for keeping me in alignment with you, my God. Thank you for for showing me, my God, when I'm wrong, my God. Thank you for showing me, my God. Thank you for helping me to fix the areas that I need to fix, my God. Thank you for maturing me, my God. Thank you for my growth, Father. Thank you for drawing me closer to you through your word, my God. Thank you for just your favor over me, my God. Thank you for what you have done, the things you brought me through through my life, my God. Thank you for bringing me through the hard times, my God, when I think I can make it, my God. Thank you for your strength that you've been giving me, my God. Thank you for putting me in positions, my God, to influence others, Father. Thank you for giving me the words to speak to others, my God. Thank you for the encouragement, my God, that you have shown and given me, my God. Thank you for my career, my God. I couldn't have done it without you, Father. Lord, you brought me through some trying times, some hard times financially, my God. You brought me through the things that was meant to break me, my God. You gave me the strength and the wisdom I needed to keep going, Father. You, you, you gave me just life, Father. Thank you for my parents, my God, for, for life that you give me. Thank you for time. 
You gave us, gave me time. You've given every last one of us time, my God, to get it right, my God. Time after time, my God. And even when we follow, you still give us time and strength to get up and keep going, Father. And Lord, I just thank you for that, Father, because time is so important. Time is needs to be intentional for us, Father. Everyone that we come in contact needs to be intentional for us, Father. These relationships is intentional, my God. What we speak needs to be intentional, Father. What we, how we think needs to be intentional, Father. How we respond needs to be intentional, Father. We need to be uh, slow to speak and quick to hear, my God. Draw us closer to you, Father. And Lord, I just thank you, my God, for just... Uh, and making me sensitive to your word, my God, making me sensitive to your Holy Spirit, Father. Just when you speak to me, my God, I ask you to remove all the chatter, my God, all the distractions, my God, that's trying to detour me from your word, my God, your way, my God, and what I know to be true, Father. And Lord, I ask that you just cast your angels around me, my God, to usher me on in and guide me in this path, my God. Lord, you're opening these doors, my God. You open Open, you've given me all these opportunities, Father. And Lord, I just want to stay in alignment with you, my God. And I ask for wisdom, Father, to know what I need to do, my God, to, to prepare, my God, and to be disciplined over the things I need to be disciplined for, my God, and be promised and mindful to give you all the praise and all the glory as usual for everything, Father. Lord, I ask that you just cover each one of these ladies, my God. You know what we're in this room for, my God. You know the things that is hindering us, my God. I ask that you remove these things right now, Father. Lord, I ask that you just cover us, Father. Give us the wisdom we need, my God. Give us discernment to hear your voice, my God. Give us the discernment to, to know the right people, my God. Give us the discernment to know the wrong people, my God. But give us your strength, my God, so we can walk away from them, my God. We can put them in fourth chair, Father. We're not going to throw no one away, my God, but we're just going to put them in fourth chair, my Father. Lord, I just thank you, my God, for your strength. Because it's strength every day that you give us, Father. It's your wisdom you give us, my God. You give us this on our jobs, my God, when this negativity coming around, my God, I ask that you remove the negativity, my God, replace it with your peace, Father, give us the words to speak to your people, my God, you're creating us a clean heart, my God, a clean mind, my God, our clean thoughts, my God, that we will seek you and people will seek, see us, see you in us every day, Father, with everything we say, we speak to people, Father. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for it, my God. Lord, I thank you for Miss Marilyn, my God. I thank you for appointing her, my God, as your one of your leaders, my God. I thank you for the anointing that you have over her, my God. Lord, I thank you for this room that she's presented for us, my God. I thank you for this space that she has um, that she has given us, my God, to put everything on the altar for you, my God, to lay it all down, my God, not to worry about the fears, my God, to be encouraged, encouraged, my God, not to worry about what others think, Father, just to be in love with you, Father. Lord, I just thank you, my God. Lord, I lift up my niece, my God. Jaden Key Asia Ross, Father. I lift her up to you, my God. That enemy is trying to attack her, my God, but Lord, that enemy is alive, Father. He will not have no say over my family, my God. He will have no say over my niece, my God. That little knot in her, her breast, my God. That is a benign knot in her breast, my God. She's been there before, my God. It was a negative uh, benign little cyst again, my God. And that's what that is now, my God. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you cover her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, my God. That enemy is not going to take my family. He's not going to attack no, no one in this room, Father. I'm sick of that enemy, my God. I'm so sick of him trying to take us, my God, trying to distract us, my God, trying to take us away from your word, Father. But that enemy is a lie, my God. You said no weapons formed against us will 
will shall prosper, my God, that you cover us with your blood, Father. And Lord, I'm seeking you, my God, and I'm asking you, I'm lifting up every last one of these ladies, my God. I'm lifting up every last one of my friends, my God. I'm lifting every last one of our families, my God. I'm asking you cover you from cover them from the top of their head to sole our feet. I'm asking place your blood on the door, my God. Place your blood over the cars, my God. Guide us and lead us, my God. Detour us from, from hurt, home, or danger, my God. The, the drivers, my God. I ask that you just guide them, my God. Sometimes it's not even us, Father. It's them, Father. But Lord, help them to stay focused, my God, so we can get to our various destinations, Father. Lord, I just want to thank you, my God. Your love is so, so, I can't even, I don't know. It's just so important, my God. It's just it's, it's a love that's like no other for us, Father. And Lord, I just thank you, my God, for what you're doing. For each and every one of us, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for your, your, your teaching us, my God. And Lord, I ask that you just cover Cover us, my God. Keep us in your hand, my God. Keep us in your hand, my God. Even when sometimes we think we can't keep going, my God, give us your strength, Father. Give us your strength to guide us, to lead us, my God. The will to keep going, my God. And see you through the mess, Father. Know that sometimes the mess is a test, Father. And we're going to pass the test, Father. This too shall pass, Father. Lord, I just be mindful and be just thankful and give you all the praise and all the glory for it all, Father. Lord, I pray and ask it all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for this day. You are holy and you are mighty. Father God, you are worthy. And most of all, God, you are faithful. You are the king and you're invited to come in, dear Lord. We thank you for the privilege and the honor to worship you, Jesus, on today. Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. When you speak to us, God, let us be quick to hear. We need your guidance and your direction every day. Fill our hearts, dear God, with expectation. Lord, you said that your sheep will hear your voice and we are your sheep. While some of us are yet in our pajamas or we're preparing for work, some of us still in our beds, help us to know that we have the privilege to keep company with you, O oh Lord. Help us to know when it's your voice that we're hearing above all others. Help us to cut out the unnecessary noise and chatter so that we can hear you, Father God, clearly stop the noise. Give us the desire to want to spend time with you, to want to be in your presence. Father God, we want to hear your voice. Let us hear your voice, God, openly and lovingly. Let us not live lives of hopelessness. Let us live lives, Father God, of expectation. That's the word I used to use, Father God. Expectation, Father God. We expect the best from you. Trusting and believing you, Father God, for all things. There's so much sadness and grief and uncertainty in this world. Father, we need you every day. We need you every hour. Break all the strongholds that keep us from serving you the way we should. Let there be no distractions. Shut down the noises, Father God. There are so many noises. Our voice, the voice of others, the voice of the enemy. Father God, your voice. Let us hear your voice above all others. God, you said that if we ask anything according to your will, that you will hear us. You said we have not because we ask not. And we come asking you today to watch over us in this group. Watch over our families and Miss Marilyn. I say a special prayer for those traveling to Broken Bow. Though I won't be there, Father God, you will. And I ask for your complete healing and covering over some of the ladies, Father God, that need this and need it so desperately. And we thank you for the opportunity for these ladies to be able to travel and, and get there amongst one another. Father God, we just thank you 
that we're able to hear your voice individually and collectively. We ask you, Lord, to just keep us. We love you and we thank you, Jesus, and we can't live in this world without you. Order our steps, Lord, in your word. Teach us your word, Father God, for your word is our sword and we need it. Jesus, continue to lead us and keep us, Father God, give us the power to lead in our families. Some of us are matriarchs and we don't know how to lead. Teach us, God, how to lead. Teach us to, first of all, to come to you in prayer, knowing that we can't do this without you. Teach us how to pray and how to teach our children to pray. And when we go through things, Father God, help us to come to you first, not our friends and not other people in the world that are going through some of the th same things, but to come to you in prayer, trusting your leading and your guidance, Father God, for we know that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. We thank you, God, and we love you, and, and we just, God, thank you in advance for the blessings over uh, Todd's niece and all of the ladies that may be going through things in this group, Lord God, we ask for a financial blessing over some of the ladies, including myself, Father God. You said we have not because we ask not, and we are asking God that you bless our homes, bless our, our jobs, and bless our, our purses, Father God. You, we can ask you for blessings, and we are asking you for blessings, God, blessings bigger than we can even imagine. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I come before you, Heavenly Father, just thank you, thanking you for this day. Thank you, thanking you for my life. Thank you for the, the life that you have given me. Thank you for just my family who have helped me through so much, so much. I just been through a lot of hard things, Heavenly Father, in my life. It's with my with my my kids, with my daughter. That's you just cover her, Heavenly Father. She has a, a doctor's appointment today to get her uh, that cyst checked out. And I'm praying that it's just the, the same as before, just a benign cyst and that they'll be able to go in and just surgically remove it, Heavenly Father, and just be no problems just as before. So I ask to just cover her, Heavenly Father, cover us as family um, as we go in and it would just, it would be a good report. Um, Cause that's what I choose to believe, Heavenly Father, that you are a God that cares about your children and that you will be there in that room with us, giving us strength, keeping us encouraged, Heavenly Father. But I'm just, I'm in need of just, just some help right now. It's just the enemy is just very, very, present in my life right now and I feel like he's just throwing so many distractions in my way just to kind of get me off of what I need to be paying attention to it's just so many distractions left and right with finances with work with health problems with just all kinds of things just being thrown at me Heavenly Father and I'm just getting tired of it just getting so tired of it But I always just try to reflect and remember over the things that you have brought me through. <laughs> you brought me through so much. You brought me through so much. And I just have to continue to lean on you, Heavenly Father trust and you have faith can never forget all the things that you have brought me through in my life just so many testimonies that that I've shared with people just so many things it's like and just I, I shouldn't even be here today 
it's like so, so many things I've gone through that should have literally taken me out. But you saved me and I'm still here for a reason. And that is the journey that I'm on now. So just figure out the reason why Shanique Shantae Hansen is still here. I'm here to do something. I'm here to do something great, Heavenly Father. I know I am. So just help me to just continue to lean on you and to hear you. Because there have been so many times that I've heard you, Heavenly Father, and I ignored. I'm not even gonna lie, I did I did, I ignored that that voice that was in me, which I know that was you speaking to me, Heavenly Father. Just from a bad relationship that I was in for far too long, a relationship that I should never have even gotten in because I was given flashing red lights and in, in 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 my just just a warning sign just don't go there don't do it don't do it and I did it anyway you know and I and I feel like you know I had to go through that relationship to, to learn something from it which I did um I, I don't regret it though because I learned a lot I learned a lot about me and I learned to know that 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 voice that was in me that was you God speaking to me he was throwing so many warning signs my way, telling me not to go there in that relationship. And I ignored every last one of them. You know, I just, I went through so much in that relationship. My kids went through so much and I feel like, yes, we were damaged, but we are now, we're in that recovery phase and we're coming out of it. And I just continue to pray and ask that you cover us, Heavenly Father. I mean, there has been nights where I've been attacked in my sleep by something. Don't know what it was, but some spirit was just, it felt like it was coming over me and it didn't feel good and it would scare me. And, but every time I would lean on you, Heavenly Father, I would pray that whatever that was, that you would just remove it, just get it out of my room, get it out from over me. Just please remove it from my life. And after a while it would leave. But when I got out of, out of that relationship, that spirit, that, 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 demon whatever it was it never visited me again so I know that relationship it was not a healthy relationship for me to be in heavenly father and I want to thank you for bringing me and my kids out of that and I want to ask that you continue to be with us heavenly father give us strength bring it back into our lives to be the people that we were before we were happy before we were making progress before I just want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for just helping me, helping me to hear you again, to tapping back into that again. Just help me to, to listen to the warning signs. Help me to, to hear you clearly, to know that it is you, Heavenly Father, that is speaking to me, giving me guidance, leading me. I ask you to lead me, Heavenly Father, guide me. Shine up the path on, on which way I'm supposed to go because I honestly, I just don't know. I don't know. I wanna thank you, Heavenly Father, for the, the ladies in this room. I ask that you cover them, protect them. The ladies that are going out of town this weekend, I ask that you be with them on their, on their journey, on their way. Protect them, give them guidance, help them get there safely and without any troubles. Um, thank you for Miss Marilyn and having this platform for us all to come together and just to share our hearts, you know, with everyone, with you, Heavenly Father. Um, I ask that you um, continue to just pour into all the ladies here in the room, pour into Miss Marilyn as she pours into us. And just continue to uplift us and, and keep us encouraged, Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for all the things in my life, all the things that you brought me through, all the blessings that are coming my way. And I offer this prayer and all my prayers through your name, Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your spirit, God. Thank you for your anointing, God. Thank you, God, for who you are, God. Thank you, God, for your peace, your love, your gentle kindness, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
thank you, God. Thank you, God. I thank you, God, for your peace, your love, God. I thank you, God, for allowing me to hear your voice. Sometimes, Lord, I don't know if it's you, but I know it's you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for my family. I thank you, God, for my husband, Lord. I thank you, God, for my tribe. I thank you, God, for my sisters. I just thank you, God. I thank you, God, for my job. I thank you, God, for, for all you have done. I thank you, God, for keeping me covered, Lord God, with your blood. I thank you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you with all my heart, Lord God. I ask you, God, to just help me, God. Help me with my remembrance, God. If you're trying to take over me, I ask you, God, to just help me. Keep me in your word, Lord God. Help me to understand your word, to walk in your word, Lord God. The straight and narrow, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I just thank you, God. I thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. I thank you, God, for the tone in this room, Lord God. I ask you, God, to be with Shanique today, Lord God. As she go into that doctor's office, Lord God, you already there, Lord God. We send your angels already around that, that hospital room, that doctor's office, God. I thank you, God, for her, Lord God. I thank you, God, for Latoya, for holding her sister up, Lord God. I thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. I give you praise, Lord. I thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you for all the trials and tribulations, God. I thank you for the testimonies, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you, God. I thank you for whatever you're doing with me, Lord God. I thank you, God. But keep me humble, Lord God. Set me apart, Lord God. But keep me in your place, Lord God. Give me the words to say, God. Sometimes I don't know what to do, God, but I thank you. I thank you for my people that come around me, who, who I, you put them forth me, Lord God. You put around me. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Glory. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord God. We glorify you, Lord God. Oh, we magnify you this morning, Lord God. We put you above all of the circumstances and the situations. Ah, God, we won't make a move without you. God, thank you, Jesus. We're waiting to hear from you. I want to hear about my troubles within me. I want to hear from you, Lord God. Glory to your name, God. We thank you. We thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we thank you for teaching us how to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that you own cattle on a thousand hills. And Father, what belongs to you belongs to me. Thank you, Lord God, for your covenant promises that are yes and they are, man. Thank you for teaching us your statue and thank you for teaching us your word. Glory to your name, God. Thank you for teaching us how to cover one another. Thanking you, thank you for teaching us how to war in prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We thank you for the trials and the tribulations that's going on in our lives because, Father, you said in your word, think it not strange. When we fall into these diver, tem these diver temptations, as if some strange thing has happened in our lives. Ah, God, we don't like it when we go through those kinds of things, but we thank you for it. Uh, we thank you for 
the outcome of it all. We thank you for the glory that's going to be revealed. Uh, so, Father, we set our affection on things that are above and not on things of this earth. Uh, Father, we ask that you would teach us how to glorify you even in the midst of our trouble. Teach us how to be still and know that you are God. Teach us how to speak the right words at the right time so that we can go in and demolish the enemy in the name of Jesus. I, the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pulling down strongholds. Father, we cast down every imagination, every hyping, every image that's coming before us that comes in to uh, try to exalt the word of God. And we put it into captivity. All of those thoughts and all of those concerns that we have, we bring them into captivity. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we bring them to your feet right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, our prayer focus this morning is teach us how to hear. Teach us how to hear and then teach us when to move. How to hear your voice and then when to make a move. Because, Father, there's nothing uncommon to man that you said that you won't leave a way of escape. So, Father, whatever it is that we found ourselves in the midst of, Father, we know you to be bigger than that problem that's going on. Teach us how to hear. I pray, Lord God, that you would teach us how to silence the noise that's going on inside of us because some of us are being chased by the enemy. I heard Shanique say that there are often times when there's a spirit that comes in and hovers in, you know, and comes in and disturbs her peace. Uh, Father, I pray that you would help us to turn that midnight into day. Because the only reason that you will allow us to have our, our eyes open to see that an enemy was in the room is that we one day will turn our weapons around and learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God for teaching us how to war, even in the midst of the storms, Lord God. The enemy has no place in our lives. He has no authority in our lives. He has no permission to come into our dreams. He has no right to come into our home. He has no right to come against our marriages, Lord God. So we lay them back at your feet. Teach us how to hear. Father, teach us what your covenant plan is, first of all. And Father, the only way we know your covenant plan is teach us how to get into your word. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We trust and believe, Lord God, that you're well able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power that's working within. Teach us how to hear your voice. Father, you said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. They don't even, they don't even follow strange noises, though the weapons of our warfare. They look carnal, God. It looks like the natural things that are going on around. But Father, they're not even worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be brought on the other side. Father, I'm reminded even with Jeremiah, when Jeremiah started off as a prophet unto the nations, uh, Father, you had to speak into Jeremiah's ear and let him know that you have called him, that you have ordained him, you have sanctified him. But to go before a nation, to pull down strongholds and to build up again. And Father, you even told him not to pay attention to the countenance upon his face. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. When worry, when strife, when anxiety tries to come in, teach us how to go back to the word of God. You told Jeremiah, do not pay attention to the countenance up on their face. As a matter of fact, I'll give the right words that you need to say at the right hour. Father, I'm also reminded of David. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. When David would had gone before you with 21 days of fasting, Father, about a battle or a situation that was going on before him, David didn't move, though he was at that 21 days, and it looked like the enemy was wrecking havoc over his life. He did not move, and because he did not remove with a reaction, you responded the way that, you know, David needed it. You told David, you came and spoke to David in the quietness of the time. You said, David, I heard you the first time you prayed. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. You heard us the first time we prayed. But you said that there were some principalities 
and there were some wicked things in the air. And I had to call for, for, for Micah to come in to help to pray. I think, Lord God, sometimes in our lives that when we're battling through rough times, we have to have some people to come in and help us to pray. Thank you so much for Toya that's hearing your voice, that's turning down her play. As a matter of fact, you're getting ready to bless Toya with what she needs, but she's turning down her plate to go to what you need. Her sister needs help. Her sister needs just a touch. Lord, sometimes the things that we have touched in life is cause our lights to dim. It's not that we don't know you. It's sometimes we're touching strange fires and that strange fire comes in to blow our fire out. And Father, we need individuals that will come in and ignite our fire again. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. Because many of us are being used, Father, as intercessors in this season. The only reason that you're showing us the problems that are going on in another person's life, because it's none of our business, what goes in and on in another person's life, except you have called us to go in and supply need. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. And I believe that when our focus is on the main thing, Father, you will give us the right move that needs to be made. Set your affection on things that are above, not on the things of this earth. Teach us how to hear your voice, Lord God. I'm also reminded, Father, when Jehoshaphat, it talks about how there was a war that had come up, a fight that had come up that Jehoshaphat did not start. Sometimes we're just a servant unto you and the enemy does not like it. He's so used to having our ear. He's so used to us laying in the bed, having sorrow, sitting up all night long, looking at the ceiling. When, Lord, how long, God? Why haven't you answered me, God? And we give ammunition for the enemy to come in and bring an answer because if we don't stand still long enough to hear your voice, any voice will do because I'm tired, God. But as Jehoshaphat stood still to allow the Lord to speak into his life, Lord, you made a move on his behalf. Father, the first thing that Jehoshaphat had learned is not to react. There's a, there's a fight that's come up, but I'm learning how not to react. I'm learning how to hear the voice of God. And the first thing that Jehoshaphat did was he called for a solemn fast. Bring the people together, Lord God. Because, see, if the enemy spooks them, they're going to take out running and we will not have anybody to fight in this fight. So, Father, I need you to bring the worshipers in. I need you to bring the warriors in. Let's come into a solemn fast. That's the way we unify together with you. We come together on one accord. We bring the corporate body in to hear what is going to be the next move. We also bring the leader in, Lord God. That first of all, that that air, that they will hold up Moses' arms so that he not get tired, so that Moses can keep hearing from, help us to hear your voice, Lord God. And Father, in the midst of it, Jehoshaphat was able to give the right instructions on what needed to be done. We call for the, for the fasters, first of all, to get the direction. Then we call for the worshipers to come in. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, though it may look like a battle, it may look like we're in this thing by ourselves. We call for our ministering angels, Lord God. All of us have angels that are assigned. Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to hear your voice. Let our ministering angels come in and deliver the word that we need so we'll know how to make a move. We'll know what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. And Father, when we've done everything that you've asked us to do, it's something about the presence of God that will come in to remind us, Father, that even though we're in the middle of the battle, the battle does not even belong to us. Lord, some of the things that we're going through right now is just for your glory. Sickness is all sickness is not unto death. It's just for your glory. Our marriages that have been taunted and they've been going through trials, it's just for your glory. Our children, when they're going through different things, Lord God, it's just for your glory. Sometimes the Lord will allow a situation.
to come up in our lives so that the Lord can draw us back into his presence because God knows what to use at the right time to make us to help, to cause us to make a move. Help us to hear your voice, Lord God. And last but not least, Father, I hear about David. And I remember when David had gone into Ziglag, he and his army, they were going into war like they always do. And Father, there are times when they've had to leave their families behind for the betterment of the calling that's on their lives and so that we can help bless others. But Father, oftentimes when we're away, I heard your word say that the enemy came in and sowed some tear among the wheat. I believe that's what's happened even in the prayer room. We started and we, we shifted courses in the room. But the enemy has come in and sowed some tear among the wheat. They've heard the word, but the word was not mixed with faith. Or they heard the word and they had so many situations going on and condemnation came in. They heard the word and the fowl of the air came in and snuffed it out because they went back to hanging around the same people all the time. But Jehoshaphat, the same way that I told you, the battle didn't belong to you, David. This battle don't even belong to you. But because I have caused you to use your weapons of war to fight during times like this, and you have been trained to hear my voice, come on in and let me give you the instruction. And David went before the Lord when he came back home and realized that the, the, the houses had been burned down, the wives and children had been taken, the possessions and goods had been taken. David just wanted to ask one question, Lord, shall I pursue? That's all I want to know. Shall I pursue? And shall I recover all? Because David already has the weapons that he needs to fight this battle. I just want to know, God, shall I pursue? I'm going back to get everything that the enemy thought that he had that was my. You will not have my children. I'm going back to get it. You will not have my marriage. I'm going back to get it. You will not have my health. I'm going back to get it. You will not have my mind. I'm going back to get it. Teach us how to hear, Lord God. Teach yes. us how to hear and also teach us when to pursue. And the Lord said, David, pursue and recover all. And the Bible said that David went right back into the enemy's camp. Matter of fact, he got one of his people, one of their people and told him what had happened. Sometimes that's all you need is just one voice that'll come in and speak a word of wisdom to you and will teach you how to go in and recover all. No longer will we sit back and allow the enemy just to come in and take our possession. The only reason he's taking our possession, God, is because we don't know the word and we don't stand back and hear from you long enough. So, Father, I heard in your word to go back and recover all. So we're recovering all even in this room. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Not one tongue that rises up against us shall be, listen, shall, shall, shall gain any leverage on us. The Lord will come in and fight every battle. But God, we're going to position ourselves first of all. First of all, we're going to get up out them beds where we're in places we should not be in. We let the enemy come into our lives when we were in the bed with a stranger. We're going to stop laying our lap, our head in the lap of strangers. We're going to stop talking to individuals that know nothing about the God that we serve. Good giving them all of our possessions. We're throwing all of these whining motions that we got in our lives, trying to get people to feel sorry for us. We're not going to do that. We don't, we're not going to fight with those weapons, but we're going to dig deep down and eat within and remember that the weapons that we need, they are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pull them down stronger. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. Absolutely no lack. So anytime we're speaking anything other than your word, teach us how to hear your voice again. Matter of fact, Lord God, let there be such a sound within us. When negativity is coming out, all that critical stuff, I can't, Lord God. How is anybody else being blessed? And why they got to be doing all? Let us get out of other folks' business and get back into our own lane. Father, so you can speak what it is that we need. Sometimes we can't hear you speaking to us because we're trying to hear you speak to somebody else. Help us stop being an accuser of the brethren. What our husbands did, what our children did, what the people on the street, what the folks on our jobs did. Stop being an accuser of the brethren and help us to hear what you, help us to hear your voice, Lord God. 
and teach us when to make a move. Teach us when to open up our mouths and say something. Teach us when to be quiet. Because sometimes it's in our silence. It's just like Jehoshaphat. It's in our silence. So the Lord would just say, Jehoshaphat, the battle, it didn't even belong to you. I just want you to get in position. That's all I needed you to do. This thing that you're going through this morning, ladies, it's just helping you to get in position. That's all it's doing. It's helping you to get in position. Some of us are just out of alignment and we just need God to come in and bring us back into place. So Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you so much, Lord God, for how you will come in and break through the veil. The enemy will not win this war. He will not get Shanique's daughter in any kind of way. That baby is already covered under the blood. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We speak to, Lord God, listen to the fear that may be still upon the family. Because when death comes in one time, he leaves a nasty stench if you don't get him up out of there. It's a spirit of grief. And some of us are carrying grief too long. We got to cast down the imagination. See, everybody gets an opportunity to do it better the next time. If, if we think about it, even with modern medicine, there are some things that people died from a long time ago, but modern medicine has come in because people kept getting it better. They kept listening to the voice and they kept making things better. Every time we go in, we're going to make it better. Though we have remembrances of things that have taken place in our past, God, we're going to make it better. We're going we to see it better. That trial that we, we went through is not the end of the story. We're going to see it better. And we're going to believe, Lord God, what it is that you have to say. And Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for what you're doing in each one of our lives. And God, how you are making, you are, you're, you're, you're doing something greater than we can ever imagine. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered our heart just yet, the things that you have prepared for us. But Father, I do believe that it will be revealed by your spirit. And we thank you on this morning in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the recovery time. Because many of us, that's what we're going through right now. Uh, we need to know how to hear God's voice and how to recover. You know, um, many of us have lost some time. You know, I, I know how I have. Sometimes I'm spending time in one area too long. And um, and I'm praying that God would give me a voice to hear, you know, when, um, you know, you especially, especially if um, you, you've made a you made a decision about something and then you realize that that wasn't the best decision that that could be made. Te you know, I want the Lord to teach me how to not stay in a thing too long, because the longer you stay in it, uh, the more you allow um, a lot of. Um, you know, battles, unnecessary battles to come in uh, because the spirit, the closer you are to the spirit of God, the Lord will begin to start showing you what needs to be done. People coming into your life, you know, teaching us how to make a move, how to bring the right people in, you know, how, how to make company with the right people. Uh, Y'all, we're getting ready to go to um, um, Orlando, Florida. Bishop is uh, uh, taking us on a retreat uh, right after we come back from Broken Bow and you know, I haven't really necessarily made um, a lot of connections since I've been there because I'm still kind of observing, you know, my atmosphere. Uh, I've learned that that um, though we can all be Christians, we're not all, all on the same walk. You know, though we're all women, we don't all think the same. Though many of us are married, our marriages are not the same. Though we are single parents or parents and we don't parent the same. And so you have to wait on God to give you your daily bread or your instructions for different things. And before we go, I, we, we were having a call yesterday, you know, getting prepared for it, getting all the information together. So you get a chance to see all the people on Zoom that are part of the ministry uh, within the Potter's House. And uh, I have gotten to the point to where um, I'm, I'm blocking a whole lot of stuff out because it's just too much to see right now. It's, it's a lot of people every now and then my eye will catch this or it'll catch that or whatever, but I want to trust on the spirit, uh, to lead me. Uh, that's why I do my greatest works at, you know, I'll go within and I'll ask God, I said, Lord, it's like a needle in a haystack. You know, I know you called me to certain area, but I want to know exactly where you call me to, because you can be 
uh, on the jobs or in friendships and yeah, scaling the wall. That's it. Thank you for reminding me of that chick. Uh, but every now and then you can be in a place uh, to where it's major, major blessings, a lot of blessings in it, but you need to figure out what belongs to you. Because everything don't belong to you. Some things can set you back. At, but sometimes, you know how it is, you know, there's always a saying, don't go to the grocery store hungry. You know, you don't want to go in there and start picking up everything. I'm so excited to be in a place. No, you still got a real, you know, you got still real, you know, battles to fight. And then because there are certain things in mind, um that's going on within my sphere right now there's certain things i can't bring in because there are some things that will literally agitate the uh, presence of god around you. anxiety um you know um unnecessary talking all that kind of stuff you know and then when you have when you when you know the calling that's upon your life uh there are some things that you just don't entertain anymore uh when you have a prophetic anointing that's on you um, you, you can't sit in the company of a lot of things, guys, because you are a seer. And when people begin to start dropping different images on you or different conversations or whatever, it will mess up your flow. And you have to know when to make a move. You know, sometimes it's, hey, sis, you know, it was good. You know what? You know, whatever. And you got to move up out of that. Uh, there are often times where I have sat in a situation because I, you know, I, I want to hear people. I want to hear what they're going through. But uh, what happens is a lot of times people will drop a lot of things on you and you are reacting, you know, like, you know, you're reacting, but you don't have the right response to it. You know, the Bible says he'll give you a word in season for what you need, for what it is that you're in. If you get away from that babbling that's going on. So I take the prophetic anointing on my life very serious uh, because it helps me to hear. It helps me to see what needs to be done. You know, we getting ready to go to the retreat. I got to be able to hear not just the planning stage, but I need to be, a, I need to already be at Broken Bow in the spirit so that I can go ahead and ward off some things. You know, that's why, that's why you, you, you make a move to know who to bring on your team, you know, so that, you know, we, we already have the, um, uh, the, the, the warriors in place. Normally when I bring people on my team, I bring warriors with me, not just skilled people, but I bring warriors with me that they are also seers as well. And so you can't be just, you know, you know, you're excited, but you have to remember that we're still in the middle of, of, you know, growing and learning and all of that. And so, uh, I, I, I saw this scripture, uh, this message this morning, and I was just going to do this quickly. And, and come up out of here, and I hope it blesses you guys. When it talked about pursuing and recovering all, you know, um, there are some things that I need in my life right now. There are some people that I need in my life, and I and I know that, but I don't know where to find these people. I don't, I don't know where they are. So what I have learned how to do, I've learned how to wait on God, you know, and and uh, we try the Spirit by the Spirit to see whether it be of God or not. And David, um, told, there was a story that was told in 1 Samuel, uh, 30, uh, 1 Samuel 30 and 8. But I really want to go back and, and read in your hearing uh, 1 Samuel 1 uh, through 30. So you guys can get an understanding. You know, if you're in the middle of battle, uh, just know without a shadow of a doubt that nothing is just happening in your life. I promise you, absolutely nothing is just happening in your life. But you need to know what to do, when to do it, and how to go about doing it. So in 1 Samuel uh, 1, uh, 30, 1 Samuel 31, he says, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag. He says, and on the third day that on, on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captive. Let me go back again. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag, you know, they were coming back home where their children were, where their families were on the third day after being out in war. The Amalekites had come in and invaded the South and Ziglag and they smitten and, and smitten Ziglag. And it says, and, um, and had burned it with fire. Verse two, it says, and had, they had taken the women captive that were therein and they slew not any either great or small, but carried them away. They didn't kill them. 
You know, you know how it is sometimes when, you know, when you hear about slavery, they don't kill them. They just take them, you know, because they can, they, they find more benefit and, and trying to use them for things that they need later on. And they said they carried them away. It says, so when David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. He says, then David and the people that were with them lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. This thing had just overtaken them. You know, it's it's a it's a cry. Oh my God, that will ring out so loud in you that it just takes your breath away. Verse five it says, and David's two wives were taken captive. Um, and he said, the wife of Abigail and the wife of Nabal, uh, the Carmelites. It says that David was greatly distressed. Some of you may call it depressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. You took us out here to battle. We trusted you. And now you, you know, we, you, you, we, didn't, we didn't expect to come back and our family members be gone. We didn't expect to come back and our children get sick. We didn't expect to come back and, you know, they came and repossessed my car. We didn't expect to come back and they tried to repossess my home. Or some things took place in my marriage. And it's a heavy burden when you're leading. And it says David was greatly distressed. He said, because the soul of the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. See, when you know what God has called you to do, what assignment that he has given to you, there are often times you can't wait on other people to encourage. That's why I say when you pray, you got to make sure you pray in the spirit. Because there are times when you may need someone in this room to pray for you. But what happens when they're going through their own stuff? See, these men normally would not be out of place when it came down to praying for David or being there for David. But I'm, I'm, I'm going through my own stuff right now. And it said David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to after the priest, um, Ahimelech's son, he said, I pray thee, bring me, bring me a heifer, bring me hither the ephod. He's ready to get ready to go into a deep form, form of meditation before God. And he after brought thither the ephod to David. And during this time, it said, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue after these troops? Shall I recover all? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him while he was in prayer. And he said, pursue. He answered him, pursue for thou shall over, over, uh, uh, I'm sorry, overtake them and without fail recover. See, before you get ready to go into battle with something, you know, they, they, this is something that I wanted and, and, and thank you God for reminding me of that. Uh, I wanted to, wanted to get some prayer shawls, uh, for us and, uh, put everybody's name on the prayer shawl, you know, to bring to the retreat. Um, and on that prayer shawl, it reminds you that when you go into prayer, that you're literally going in before the Lord on behalf of all of your concerns. See, all the people in these rooms, we 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 gained a um uh we 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 feel for one another. We we feel uh we feel family in this room, and so we got all these concerns, and then we got our other families too because we pray for one another. But David said at an appointed time that all right, I'm in a place where you know I'm 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 feeling the urge to encourage. I, I got to go back and do something. I can't just let these people fall apart. You know, nobody's here with me. And first of all, I'm gonna have to strengthen myself because I feel alone. And David said he encouraged himself, and the Lord spoke to him during those times. He said, "Recover all. Go back and get what you need." Y'all, I say this to you. There are oftentimes even in ministry with me. Uh, there are every time we get ready to move to another level and those that have been with me for a while have probably recognized this by now that every time we get ready to cross over a threshold, we go into warfare just like this. Uh, y'all, I remember when we first started, um, ultimate connections and I often tell this story about how, um, everybody, they found a set place. There were about 50 women in there in the, in the, um, uh, I call it a pilot run when I first started doing it because there's a thing called proof of concept when you're, you know, stepping out in business. You want to make sure that this thing is real. That's why you don't charge people for stuff. You know, you don't even know whether this is something that you want to do because you don't know the cost of what it all, what it is. And uh, those ladies came in and y'all one by one. 
a family member start dying. And they weren't just dying among the group, they were dying among the leaders that were there. And uh, we came in and I tell you, not one, per one, not, one per one, not one person fell apart. I know we are covering for people that have gone through grief and loss. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. It's a great, great covering place to help you to heal. So many people heal. When I tell you, one after another, then it hit my family. I think it hit me last. And, uh, and I started thinking, God, what happens when uh, everybody's gotten hit? You know, you got to teach them how to encourage themselves because you just don't know when the people that you may have been dependent upon uh, to be there for you, they got their own battles to fight. And y'all, we made it through. Not one, not one person dropped off. Not one person left. Not one leader left during that time. Nobody, because we needed each other. This was a safe family that God had created around us. So we had to learn how to hear the voice of God and the when to make certain moves. Every time God has taken us, it's been 10 years. Next year will be 10 years. The Lord has taken us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And he keeps on peeling off and he starts with me. Every time there's a shedding, every time there's pulling off with me, there's a pulling off that takes place among the group because you're getting ready to go into places that you've never gone in before. And I hear Shirley often saying it, when Marilyn goes up, the rest of us go up too, but you're having to shed yourself. Remember the Bible says many are called, but it's only a few that's that's chosen. See, every now and then, I have to hear and listen to find out who's going to be walking with you and who's not. Those that keep running and, you know, um, they they keep, you know, they, they don't stay in place. Those are not the ones that's called in for this particular season. It's not saying that they won't be called, but they're not called for this particular season in life. And see, you got to know who the people are in your life that have been called to do war with you in this season. Because there are some people, when trouble comes, they're going to take out running. They're going to take out running. Help me to hear your voice, Lord God, and help me to know when to make a move. See, I need to know early in stages, whether it be relationship, whether it be friendship, we got to have something in common with each other. You know, so I want to know, how do you how do you spell relief? Do you cuss a lot? You know, do you backbite a lot? Do you do all that? Because if you do, uh, what does what fellowship was does darkness have with light? And some people may be asked the question, well, how does one person get chosen for this? Another person get chosen for that? Nobody chooses anybody but God. But it's up to us to hear the voice and the Lord teaches us where to go. So some of those things that you're around, you'll learn how to let go of. If it's not following God's voice, you don't want to be dealing with that. You don't want to keep dragging that kind of stuff around with you. You want to walk with wisdom. So God, teach us how to hear your voice. And the Bible says that David went back and uh, verse six, he said, uh, verse nine. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and they came to the brook Beshore, where those that were the, those that were left behind stayed. He said, but David pursued, pursued he and 400 men for 200 abode behind which were so faint, it was only a few of them that were faint. It looked like all of them left him, but as we're reading, it wasn't It wasn't all of them. It was just a few that had become faint in heart and they couldn't go over. Maybe they were the ones that were burying the dead or maybe they were uh, grieved, you know, still grieving, grieve with, grieving with some things. Verse 11, he said, and they found an Egyptian. It's always a remnant in there somewhere. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him some bread. See, all you got to do is give them some food sometimes. They tell them like, that's, that's them kids. That's how my, my daughter Jess was. When them boys were doing something, especially Ahmad, all you got to do is get, get Jess some food. And Jess will tell off on all of them. She tell off everything they done done. <laughs> See, it's always somebody that Jessica had the better cause. Though she was in the middle of it, watching it, Jess telling you, I don't want none of that. Y'all, but so my mama tell you, and all of my was the one that went over there and took that thing over there, and the Mark was the one that drove him over there to go to <laughs> it. They're gonna tell it all. See, we laugh about it now, because that's who we are as a family. I don't bring condemnation upon the kid, but I let them know Jess gonna tell them, y'all. I'm telling you, y'all doing something wrong because it's her spirit. It's what God has called her for in life because she can't operate well when she got when she got secrets going on on the inside. So he said he came to him for for he had eaten no bread, no drunk any water three days and three nights. So the boy was hungry. And verse 18, it said, David said to him, to whom belongest thou and whence and whence art thou? And he said, I'm a young man of Egypt. 
servant, a servant of the Amalekites. That's all he wanted to know. Where they at? That's what I want to know. If you one of them, I know you over there. You saw what they did. They saw what you, you saw what they did to my family. I just want to know where they are. See, this is what happens. And I'm going to get ready to close on this. Um, a lot of time when y'all see me get quiet and there's something going on within the family, something going on within the tribe, I shut down because I need to hear where they at. Who stirred up some mess in the group? Who stirred up? And y'all, we've gone through that many, many times within our ministry. Who stirred up some stuff? And they always come back and tell it. Somebody's always going to come back and tell it on somebody because they've been whispering in the background. And they don't know who they're supposed to be talking because a lot of times when you got a loose spirit, you just talk to anybody. You don't care who you're talking to. And you don't realize there are some people that have a love and a call for where they're at because they are more connected than that person is. And the people come in and tell off. And you know what David does? David go right on in into the camp. He go right up underneath and cut their feet off. And the Lord and the David goes in to pursue all. Matter of fact, take back everything that belongs to you. Because some of them uh, went in and took captive some people uh, by words that they spoke. I hope y'all are understanding what I'm saying. They went and took captive some people that were spoken. See, this is what happened on your job. Uh, people whispering, uh, people speaking evil things against you and stuff that wasn't even real, whatever the case may be. And you over there trying to clap back and get back and all that kind of stuff. No, David put that ephod on and we went before the Lord and asked the Lord, shall I, shall I pursue and shall I recover all? I'm telling you, I come after every enemy that tries to come after me, but I don't come after you in the way that you know it. I'm going to come after it in the spirit because I need the Lord. That Isn't that what he told Jehoshaphat? The Lord will fight the battle for you. Because there are some that, I'm telling you, they just do, that's just what they do. And you can't stop people from doing what they do until God convicts them. And it's just you chasing up the folks, trying to correct them all the time. I wish they could see, I wish they see. I'd have been there too many times. And, and, and finally, the Lord said, get your hand off of that. You're spending too much time in that. Bring your ear back to me. So you can hear when you need to make a move. When you need to pursue. And God will give you wisdom. I can't tell y'all how many battles I have won. The Lord has won for me when I step back. When I remember that I just needed my prince angel to come on in, Michael to come in. Or when I realized the Lord said, don't pay attention to the countenance upon their face. Or it may have been that Lord just came in and said, you know, you bring your God. I forgot about the, the you know, when uh, Ahab, I mean, when Je uh, what was her name? Uh, was it Jezebel? Um, I had, I had them prophets bowing down, you know, sometimes you got to tell them, bring your God up. Against, that, that's what I used to always say. Bring your God up against my God. And which you one answer by fire, that's the one we're going to serve. Cause I'm not fixed to keep fighting that battle with you. Word. It's just word curses going out, playing mind games. I'm not going to fight that battle with you. Bring your God up against my God. And which you one answer by fire, that's the one we're going to serve. So you got to learn how to fight in battle. When them doctors are giving y'all a bad report, bring your God up against my God because I know you just practicing medicine. My God is the healer. So you got to know how to fight in battle. Somebody bring you some bad report, your husband, this and that going on. No, 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 no. You bring your God up against my God because I got covenant in this relationship. I don't care about my husband cheating on me, doing whatever. You can't Listen, you don't let no woman come take nothing from you. You need to put that ephod on and ask the Lord, shall you pursue and shall you recover all? Because you're going to need it because that beast going to try to come out in you if you ever hear something that you ain't got no business hearing. You better ask the Lord to cover you, shall I pursue? And the Lord can, listen, there's some things that are going on in the background. People imagine that you'll never find out about because it wasn't meant for you to find out. That's why, that's why I say quit telling folks stuff about their marriages. I just think she should have known. Did she ask you that? You over there in a battle and you know what somebody going to do? Somebody going to come do you the same way. Don't go over there telling folks about stuff that's going on in somebody else's marriage. Leave that alone. You don't know when weed and terror is coming in together. You don't know what God is using to help bless somebody's life. You got to know how to go into warfare. Stop being weak, ladies. Stop, stop, stop bowing down up under pressure. The devil's just doing what he always does. He stirs up mess. And he likes to come in and take over. So when we put our ear to God's mouth, the Lord will tell you about some things. That ain't what it looks like, Marilyn. I need to stir you up about it because I need you to get back into a posture called prayer. That sickness, all sickness ain't unto death. 
I need you to make sure you start eating the right foods, though. Shall I, shall I pursue and recover all? I need you to take care of that thing that's going on. That child got some illness, sickness, whatever going on. Yeah, it ain't unto death, though. I need you to lay, lay your hands on them. I need you to stir up your gift. That, that, that thing that you got healing hands, I need you to stir that up. All, everything ain't to the end. Unless you keep seeing it. And all the time we speak that is because that's what we're seeing all the time. So that, that's all I got this morning. I got so much more that I want to say about it. Because anytime it comes into warfare, you got the right girl here. I think I fought so many battles that uh, I don't even play with the enemy no more. I bow out of stuff and I ain't got to give you no reason as to why I bowed out of it. When the Lord said to go in and recover all, that's what I do. And sometimes the recover says to shut your mouth. Don't you say nothing. I'll fight that battle for you. Because matter of fact, if it belonged to God, he'd probably been trying to teach that lesson a long time ago. You got to take what it is because some things agitate you. Don't let things just come in and keep agitating you and taking you into places. So I'm going to turn it over. Um, I don't know. Anybody want to lead in the discussion time today? Anybody feel the urge, you know, to lead discussion today? Let me take everybody forward. Anybody got a burning desire to lead? Good morning. Good morning, Tanisha. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, like, I was in a negative, negative space yesterday. And today was just confirmation to just leave it and stand still. And I just want to thank you, Ms. Miller, because I swear every day, you hit right on target because yesterday, I was, like I said, I was in a bad space to where I didn't want to listen. I wanted to be disobedient with it, but I just, I just prayed about it and I had a conversation with a person who has a lot of wisdom yesterday, and um, he told he told me some real, some real that I needed to hear, and so I'm, I'm gonna let it go. What I was going through was just let it go and just stand still and allow God to handle that situation. And um, that's what I just wanted to share. And I'm just in a, a focused space with, with God right now. I woke up this morning, had a conversation with him, talked to him about everything that just was heavy on me yesterday. Because like I said, I was not listening to nothing. But today, I, I'm back on track. I'm back on track. And I just thank you for always having that anointed spirit and know when to hit us with the right thing. Amen. Amen. Uh, and yeah, that, that's what it takes. You know, God will change the situation overnight, y'all. He can change it really at the blink of an eye. You know, you may think that, oh, he's going to do this for everybody, whatever. No, he's just to bring awareness and bring attention, you know, into our lives. So thank you so much, Tanisha. And I'm so glad that. You know, you are uh, better today and keep fighting the good fight of faith because the enemy, he'll try to come sucker punch you again with sometimes the same stuff. And it's like, devil, I just told you I was not bowing down. I just got through telling you that. And eventually what you'll do, ladies, I want to say this to you. Eventually what you'll start doing is you'll stop praying in your natural language. You start praying in your heavenly language because the devil don't know what you're talking about. He come after your words. But if you pray in the spirit, you pray in the word of God. You're praying God's thoughts. So that may be the next area that you may be asking God to do. Lord, take me into that place to where I stir up my spiritual gift. Cause, you know, talk, speaking in tongues. If you've never spoken in tongues, just ask the Lord for it. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Amen. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Toyo, are you in a position to where you can, uh, or Mrs. Kathy, where y'all can bring the people in and I can get ready to head out to this gym? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, um, Kathy. Um, yes, ma'am. I just want to uh, thank the ladies this morning for prayer, uh, the space that uh, we've developed here. And um, we just continue to lift up um, Shanique's daughter and, um, you know, speak peace to the room. And um, I, when Tanisha was speaking a while ago, uh, you, 
you were saying that you're just going to stand still and the word says just stand still and uh, see the salvation of the Lord. And I think that is that word was for me also because, you know, I've heard us pray about uh, our family members and, you know, our friends and stuff like that and financial things that have come up. You know, it's kind of like with the retreat. So everything was working just fine, just like uh, uh, I think it was Shelly that said it the other day. You know, we was you know excited about the trip and everything, and then when it's it, it's here, it's like it just hits you all of a sudden, and then you got something that's going on, it's financial, and you know just all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna take that word, what you just said, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm gonna take that for myself also, because um, we've been in this room and. I know things been happening to us while we've been in this room, but now that we've been praying and expressing, you know, what's on our heart to the group as a whole, then things are trying to come up against us. But I think that's what the Lord is saying. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, uh, we're going to pursue with prayer. We're going to pursue with wisdom. We're going to pursue with joy. We're going to pursue with peace. We're going to pursue with understanding, you know, take those things back because the enemy, you know, he thought he stole them from us, but he can't take nothing that we don't give him. So we're not giving him our peace. We're not giving him our joy. We're not giving him our wisdom. And it doesn't come from him. It comes from God. So we're going to keep those things, you know, and not let the enemy think that he has control over anything because he doesn't. Um, Anybody else would like to share this morning or have a testimony? Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm getting ready for my procedure, and I just want everybody to uh, keep me in prayer. Marilyn, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for trying to help us and direct us on praying because I am so thankful for this. I'm learning from this and I want to know how to pray and how to pray what need to be prayed and how to cover my family, uh, my sisters, and how to just do what we need to do. And I just thank you for your guidance. And I thank you all ladies, love you all. And I have to go now. Thank you, Miss Shirley. We will be praying for you and lifting you up. We speak peace to you right now. We speak comfort to you and strength. We say whatever the, uh, the, the doctors report, it can't come up against our God. It's like Sister Marilyn said, bring your God up against our God. And our God is the healer. Our God, he's a way maker. Our God, he is the true God. And he stands all by himself. He backs his own word up. And so we just cover you right now and the blood covers you. Speak peace to you right now in this room and we stand in agreement with that. Thank you for sharing this morning. Anyone else would like to say something? Good morning, Ms. Kathy. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to um, just say, I just love this word this morning. Um, us just coming in the room and praying and putting it all out on the altar for um, God and just worshiping him, glorifying him. And I just um, just want to say, I just thank you for everyone for, you know, lifting up my niece in prayer. And I already know the end report is going to be benign. It's nothing to worry about. My God got his hand on her. She's a praying child. That's one thing I know about Jaden. She, she amazes me sometimes because the, some of the stuff that she says. And so she, she pray. And she said, Nanny, even if I don't, if I forget to pray at night, I get up in the morning and I pray. So she's a praying child. She she knows God and he speaks to her. You know, I can just listen to her sometimes when she talk and everything. And uh, I'm just so thankful for that. So I already know that um, she's she's healed. It's, it's nothing, but we just got to go through the process. So. Amen. And we stand in agreement with that also, Toya. And if she's praying by herself, then that's all it takes. Just her to be a believer. She's going to believe by herself, then she will. But we stand in agreement with her also. And if she's been speaking to the Lord, he knows her heart. 
And he's already done a good work in her just to, from the beginning to even have faith to pray. You know, we, we please God by our faith. So if that's what she's walking in, we walk in it with her. And um, thank you for sharing. Yes, yes, ma'am. Ma'am. She's 16 and I, she just amazed me some of the stuff that she, because she's praying. Mm-hmm. She pray and just some of the she just I don't know she's she, Jaden always been the 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 a different look even when she was a baby she mm-hmm. she, she was different. That's good and being sixteen and praying that's awesome right there all by itself because you don't find too many young people that's praying and you know believing and having faith that there is a God you know some think that that God is a myth or it's just not real but she know who she's talking to so. She know who to have faith in for sure. So, so yes, ma'am. Thank you for sharing this morning. Anybody else have some would like to uh, say something this morning? Good morning, Miss Kathy. Um, Good morning. Is, um, I love when you and uh, I love who I will come on and uh, do the opening. Miss um, Kathy, I have been in this room a year. And I feel like you have grown a lot as well. And because um, you used to be so nervous, but now you're just gone with the flow. Look, look at God. But um, I just want to say uh, for me, um, I've been in this room a year. And last year I was a toe up mess. And this year, um, I just, I, I really just want to say, I thank God for, for this room, for the, for the encouragement, the confidence that I have. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, sometimes I get a, uh, a little, a little down, but it's always somebody going to help you pick you up. That's why um, when Miss Marilyn was saying you have to get around the people, you have to watch who you uh, be around and you listen to what you watch. And here lately, um, I just don't look at a lot of TV because it um, takes a lot of your time. It takes a lot of your, especially your mind, your mind go places. Um, so um, this is just for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I do look at TV. It's just uh, certain times I don't look at TV or because I know what, uh, I feel like I know now my purpose is in life. Back then, who would have known? I, don't, I didn't even know what my purpose is, but I can actually say, I know my purpose because of this class, this dream builders class. I finally know what this dream builders class is. We're dreaming, we're building, we're building each other up, we're lifting each other up. I thank God for you, ladies. You, I don't know if anybody. I really do. I, I'm very grateful for this room. Like I just went through a, um, a hard. I feel like a hard transition, but it was just a um, a test of my my faith with my with my marriage. I feel like that's the biggest, ooh, sometimes. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But um, but I, I'm, I'm, I really am, I'm grateful for this room and I'm, uh, thank you, Miss Kathy, for allowing me to uh, share. I think she might have lost connection. Um, anyone? Hey, Ms. Captain, we may have lost. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead Toya. Okay. Uh, I was just trying to say, I think she might have lost connections. Does anyone else have anything they want to share this morning? That's built here. And it's, oh, okay. we got, I'm sorry. We no, got to no, know no. that it's God because, you know, we most of us, we don't really know each other, seen each other's faces or anything. And it's just feel, we feel the closeness in this room, you know, just the, that's a God thing, as Sister Marilyn would say, you know, and we just continue to build on that because we've shared so many personal things here in our, in this area, in, in this space, and we haven't heard them repeated or anything like that. And then with the sessions that she's got going on now with I think Kathy may be in a bad area. Uh, Mrs. Tari, if you could take over while she's away. Okay. Yeah, I just want to piggyback off what she was saying. Um, you know, this this space is a good room because, like I said, we don't 
like she was saying, we don't, um, you don't hear about what we talk about in this room, what stays, what goes on in this room. Yes. What goes on in this room stays in this room. And that's what I love about it. You can be transparent. You can be as open. You can say what's on your mind. You can, you, you, you can put it all out there talking to God and, and it stays in here. And I just love that about it. Yes, yes, ma'am. I think I lost connection, but I'm back now. Um, <laughs> and I missed. Uh, well, when when I lose connection, my my uh, chat disappears. I think Katamara had that in there. If somebody can read it, I I lost it because when I lose connection, the chat disappears. She okay. wrote something in there. If can you read it, uh, Toya? But yes, I can read it. Okay. She said, I pray today we all walk in self forgiveness. The weight of self condemnation is not our portion. We are forgiven and and free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That mm -hmm. is so true. So true. Because we can sure condemn mm -hmm. our own self for sure. You know, we should have, would have, could have, that kind of stuff all day long. But um, with Sister Marilyn bringing this to the forefront, like I said, I think I said it yesterday, you know, I, I just been aware of how I'm treating people, of what I'm saying. And, you know, and when the enemy want to bring something up you know you have to know the word of God to put the word of God on him because he's going to flee from the word of God that's what he's going to flee from and the word of God will stand alone all by itself you know he backs his own word up he doesn't have to have me backing him up he backs his own self up and he said he'll come for his word so when you lift his word up to him he's going to hear it because he said my child She's crying out. She's speaking my word. Let me go see about her. So that's what he's going to do. He's not going to come for our tears, our woes, our sorrows. We're going to have to get in the word. And I'm talking to myself, preaching to myself also, not just, you know, to y'all, but we're going to have to get in the word. And I know sometimes that, you know, you get in the word and you can't understand. If you're like me, you get another version. That's what you have to do. But, you know, so you can understand. But that's what the word of God says. He's going to come for his word. So as long as we know his word and we can get into it and give it back to him, then we're going to get some prayers answered. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies, for this. Y'all, I think Miss Kathy, she drops out at a certain point, but I agree with Kathy. I was over here like, yes, yes, he comes for his word. He does not come for those tears. The Lord, he's acquainted with our grief. Uh, he does know what the tears are coming for, but that's not what he's coming after. He's coming back to want to know, will you, even in the pressing to where the tears are coming out, will you go after his word? Will you allow the tears to push you into his word? You know, and I know a lot of times, you know, we just want to, you know, talk about it or whatever. But after you talk about it, you've got to close it out with his word. And that's one of the things that we'll learn in this room with women who, women who win, who women who win in prayer, is there's nothing with you talking about the situation that's going on with you, but you want to close it out with his word. Because otherwise, that's like a loose cannon that's just running around and somebody else is wondering, you know, oh, I was going through that same thing. And, you know, and if, and if you don't put the word on top of it, you can start up a conversation that will lead into no man's land, you know, uh, because that's what he calls a boy profane and vain babbling, you know, because it will lead to ungodliness. And sometimes we don't always know where ungodliness is coming from. It's coming from, you know, when we don't learn how to uh, manage, you know, our conversations and, you know, we don't stop to think about, okay, I've heard myself talking. Now what I'm talking or I have been in this situation for a while now, is this, is this situation benefiting me? Is this benefiting God? And can God get the best out of me with it? And it's just something about it then when you begin to start turning around. And y'all may wonder, you know, how do I know, uh, you know, um, what messages to bring forward? Or how do I know that these things, you know, will work in your life? Um, a lot of them I have been through. Uh, but, uh, matter of fact, anything that I tell you about is something that I have already channeled through. And I've seen the Lord work on the other side. Sometimes I got stuck in the middle of the battle because I couldn't find my way through it. Because sometimes, man, those nights got a little rough. It got a little dark. And I got stuck. One, because I didn't know where my angel was at or my Michael was at 
that could come and help me to get up out of that stuff. You know, you got to make sure to get you some good lifelines around you, you know, so that they can help you to grow. That's one of the things that I want to definitely stress. I was thinking about uh, DeAndrea this morning and uh, DeAndrea talks about how, you know, a year ago she was, I mean, literally, you know, kind of messed up. Um, I, I knew that there were that was greater inside of her. But sometimes you need somebody to come into your life to help you pull the greater out of you. Because if you, whether we know it or not, boy, I tell you, we will quickly go back to that old self in a minute. We get off this line, and if the majority of the people that you hang around is like what you have been around in your years of, you know, not, you know, being very productive, it's going to be the same thing until you make some necessary adjustments that need to be made. And DeAndre came in a little bit closer, and she started taking private sessions. And not only did she start taking private sessions for herself, she asked could she and her husband come in. When she and her husband came in, this was a whole different ball game because you're going to get a chance to see the naked side of both of them. See, because people can tell one side of the story, the other person can tell their side of the story, but God wants to hear what his part of the story is. And we need people that will come in, that will stay with us, that will help us to walk through those things and I do believe that those are the times when you start seeing the greatest, the greatest blessings taking place in your life. If you find women in this room that you admire and they seem to be very strong with their walk, ask them what they're doing. Ask them what are some of the things that they've actually done. You know, I heard even uh, DeAndre say Kathy has gotten stronger. I agree with that. Kathy doesn't even blink her eye now, whereas before... I remember when Kathy used to be very shy. She had the word in her. I knew that she did. She just needed the confidence to know that what God had spoken to, to her was for her. And I believe that when she started walking out by faith, that's when she began to start seeing the promises of God. Even the gifts in her life begin to start being stirred up. And a lot of times it takes us just a stepping in, just a little bit closer. You know, even... Don't even wait to be assigned to maybe lead some of the sessions or to pray. You know, you may want to just raise up your hand and ask, you know, I'd like to, you know, enter into, you know, that group of prayer or I'd like to do some of the takeaways sometime because I got a devil to fight. And I notice that when I open up my mouth, I run that devil away because when I speak, I speak the word of God. See, sometimes I think many of us are waiting on God to assign are waiting on God to come and tell us something that he's already told us before. And the Lord said, I need you to move on the first thing I told you to do. When you move on the first thing, then God can give you the next step of things that need to be done. So we're growing. And I'm saying all that to say we're growing in our faith. We're growing in our walk with God. I say this to you. This is not that. Wherever you came from, Whatever, you know, I don't know. I don't know what other people were doing in ministries. I do not know. But I will tell you, this is not that. I'm not that girl that, you know, and I know sometimes people look at you as just, and I am, I am, a, I'm, I'm a human just like everybody else, but I ain't that girl. I ain't that girl that you can just come up on me and just talk about anything or whatever. I'm not that girl. I'm not that girl that you could come in and try to throw slashes at me and I don't, you know, bounce back with the word of God. I'm not that girl. This is not that room to where you've been in to where people backbite and talk about folks and uh, this ain't that room. This ain't the space. And so sometimes mentally we got to move out of that old world and make a change and an adjustment in here because many of you that are in here, I know without a shadow of a doubt y'all got a strong gift on you, but you won't open up. It's those folks that's in your in your ear all the time. Girl, I don't know who you think you are. I don't know what you think you're doing. And you believe that report instead of just believing what God has to say to you. So I am making an appeal to pull you guys up out of those dark places. So Tamara said something. She said, I pray today that we all walk in self-forgiveness. Forgiving ourselves for being in the wrong places. Something's got your ear and it's been having your ear too long. You've been listening to that, that dead thing too long. You got to lay aside those weights. That's stuff that easily besets you. You got to look to Jesus, who's the author, and finish up your faith. God, I thank you for the lesson. I don't, I don't, listen, we can step up out that classroom. I'll pass the test now. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to come in there and pass it with no C's. I need some A's and some B's because I don't want to go back into that anymore. 
And then the great thing, the way to keep you out of it is when you go back and start teaching other people, get into your set place, get into that purpose that God has for you. And I do believe that we begin to start walking, you know, into a place of greater victory. So I pray this morning that the word has been received in the spirit in which it was given and that many of you have awakened from your sleep and your slumber. This battle you're going through, it's, it don't belong to you unless you in harm's way. Unless you're over there in Pandora's box, there are some things you've caused upon yourself. But if you know that you didn't cause this upon yourself and you were trying to follow God and maybe you misheard it somewhere, make the correction. Don't let, don't let a condemnation set up on you. All have sinned. We all fall short. We don't nobody just get it right all the time. But they have they have a place called repentance. You know, that we come into the presence of God so that we can see and hear what it is that the Spirit has to say. So, Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you so much for the growth that's taking place in this room. I thank you so much, Lord God, where the eyes of our understanding of, is being enlightened. I thank you for helping us to know that we walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we're trusting in you even on this day to take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Father, we reckon that that present suffering that we're going through is not even worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed. So, Father, show us your way. Teach us how to walk in a path of righteousness for your name's sake. And yea, though we walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, we shall fear no evil because God is with us. We thank you for your rod. We thank you for your staff. We thank you for all the people that you placed in our circle those people to come in to help us, help make us better, to make us strong. Help us to stop fighting with those people. Help us to stop putting butts and maybe you don't understand. Stop, stop fighting with that kind of stuff. And let us be attentive to the word of God. Teach us how to hear your voice. And God, even give us the right time to make a move. Some of us need to move away from some stuff even today. You don't need to go back and ask for permission. You don't need God to keep telling you the same thing over and again because he's going to keep saying the same thing. God, teach us how to make a move. If we're dealing with our finances, we know what move we need to make. We're dealing with unforgiveness, we know the move we need to make. We got malice in our homes, we know the move we need to make. He said, resist the enemy and the enemy will flee. What is the enemy? The enemy of our soul. Third John says, I wish above all things that you will prosper in whatever you're doing and be in good health. Even as your soul, probably. we come against that lying spirit. Some of us just got some lying, just outright contrary spirits. It ain't nothing for us to tell a lie. We make a promise. We don't keep our promise. But we get mad when other folks don't do theirs. We, 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 we double-minded. And James said, don't let the, the double-minded man think he shall receive anything from God. We say one thing, we do something else. Lord, we make a vow. We don't keep our vows. It's good for the moment because we're into emotions. Help us to step away from emotions and help us to stand up on your word and on your promise. Though it may not come today. It may not come through the avenue that I thought it was going to come through. You know, but I just believe by your spirit, God, that you will release an answer to us. And when you do, help us to make us move. Matter of fact, today, teach us how to wait on you. We will not move too fast. And we will not move too slow. We're going to wait on you. We're going to bring down all of that anxiety, all of that fear, all that worry, all that doubt, and let us just do the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. We do what you say. We can have what you have, and we thank you. Let, let the lives of the people before us be a testimony. That's exactly what Abraham, there was a great cloud of witness that gone on before us. You know, we, we want to look for that great cloud. Who are the people that's testifying about the goodness of the Lord? They've been in the same stuff you've been in. As a matter of fact, instead of me correcting my problem, I want to say to them, well, you did it too. But that wasn't your correction. That was their correction. But when you see what you need to do, do what you need to do, you may strengthen them to do what they need to do. We all bounce off of one another. So, Father, we thank you. Let us not, you know, be uh, condemning toward other people because what we condemn is going to come back in our laps as well. Help us to set out what it is that we need so great things can come back as well. We don't see light things as they are. We see things as we are, and we are children of God. Clear up our eyes one last time, God. Help us to see this thing more clearly. That this time when we walk in, 
we walk in to take back everything that the enemy has taken away. You will not have my mind. You will not have my finances. You will not have my marriage. You will not steal this day from me. You will not take any of those things, but everything will belong to God. So, Father, we thank you. Until we meet again, bless us, God. Go with us. Talk with us. Sit on us, Lord God, even on this day. Raise us to a new level of vibration for tomorrow's call. We come in, we grow in faith. Rise up them tongues, Lord God. Bring them to the forefront. We need to walk in the spirit so that we can annihilate this thing in the flesh. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys be blessed. I'll meet you back again on tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.